Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're gonna to talk about what would happen if you declared a variable without using var, let, or const. For example, I'm here in the Google Chrome DevTools and what if I just said some var equals true without using const let or var in front of it, right? So I'm just gonna save that variable as is. What just happened? Let's find out. Okay, so let's jump into this. What would happen if I did something like this in production code? Why is this bad? Well, the reason why is probably not what you might think. And it is because in JavaScript, there exists something called the global object. Now, depending on which JavaScript runtime you are currently running your code in, that can either be a browser or node. So kind of think of it as like front end, back end. So depending on where you are running your code at any given moment, there's something called the global object. And what the global object is, is an object of data. And all this data basically contains functionality that allows that runtime environment to do all of the various processes that it needs to do. In the browser, the global object is something called window. And there are a bunch of properties on this window object that allow the browser window, the one that we're currently using, to do a whole bunch of different stuff. So for example, in this one, we have something called alert. If we were to use that, it'll show an alert pop-up modal. We have document that'll give us access to the actual document object model, what we see in the browser viewport over here on the left. We have things like scroll X and scroll Y. Those give us access to the various functionalities of how the scroll bars in your viewport work and where the cursor is at any given moment. So let's jump back to here, right? What if we were to declare a variable without var, let, or const? What will happen is that variable gets placed onto the global object. Now that might be fine, it might work out okay, but what if we were to do something like scroll x equals 100,000, right? Then we are actually overwriting a property that already exists on the global object, on window. And what's gonna happen if we were to accidentally overwrite one of those properties is that what would happen is that the default, what we would call the user agent functionality, that is all the stuff that the browser has to do, that default behavior would actually change. So this could potentially be a really bad thing if we are running a program and it actually is messing with the runtime environment's native functionalities. Now, aside from actually changing the functionality of the runtime environment, creating new properties on the window object or potentially overwriting them will actually weaken what's called the resiliency of your program. In this case, that would be the ease of deleting and creating new functionality. Now, one way to circumvent this is a process called global abatement. And what that is, is basically, if you're familiar with the concept of state, we are creating some sort of global object that's not the window object, not the not the global object, but we're creating our own global object with properties and functionality that will be available throughout our entire application, our entire program. So what we could do is I could do something like const my globals, and that is just going to be an empty object. And then anytime I have some functionality which I need access to throughout my entire program, I can just place it on my globals. So I could do my, something like my globals dot sum var equals true, something like that. And then that variable would be available to me throughout my entire program via the my globals global object. Also, making sure that we are not overwriting or writing new properties onto the the global object, the window object in this case means that we are also safe from potentially writing functionality that could conflict with other third-party libraries which we are using in our program. Now, why is that the case? Because we could potentially have some third-party vendor logic which exists sort of at the same scope level as our global object. So we wanna make sure that, this is where naming conventions come in too because we wanna make sure that none of these names conflict with names of functionality that already exists. Now, something that's really important to understand is, okay, if we are creating properties without var, let, or const, and they get put onto 
the window or the global object. What happens when we create variables with var, let, or const? Where do those actually end up? Now, in order to understand this, we have to take a look at a feature of the JavaScript runtime called the call stack. What the call stack is, is it is a data structure which follows a last in first out rule, meaning it's like a stack of pancakes. So the last stack frame that gets put onto the top of the stack will be the first one that has to come off when we wanna take one off. So it's like a stack of plates or pancakes. We have to, in order to reach the bottom ones, we have to take the top ones off first. Anytime we are running code, anytime we are running JavaScript, we are running code in the global execution context. So we visualize that by placing a stack frame representing the global context onto the call stack. So that's gonna be our first, our sort of base layer stack frame. So what is the global context? The global execution context is where we are executing our code by default when we are running code in JavaScript. And this kind of has two parts. And the reason why is because what we use the call stack for is to visualize the execution of functions. Anytime we run a function, so if I had, you know, a function say name, right? We have a function say name and it says it will return Chris, let's say, okay? That's what this function does. So that when we call say name, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a stack frame onto the call stack for say name. And then when we are running the code of say name, in other words, when we are when we are evaluating what this function's definition actually does, all of the code that's happening within the scope of this function is considered to be running within that stack frame. Now, something else that we have to understand about JavaScript is that when we are running functions, we have to know that functions are sort of like a function and an object. So it's kind of two things. So anytime we're running a function, we have to understand that a function is two parts. A function has both the functionality of the function itself, but it also has an associated object. And so when we're talking about this global execution context, it's sort of two parts, right? There's a function part of it, and there's also an object part of it. The object part of it is the global object. In other words, if we're in the browser, it's gonna be the window. And the function bit of it is actually where any variables are going to exist if we were to create them using const let or var. So we have our object portion, we are gonna have our function portion. So if we were to use var let or const to create a variable, those variables will exist within sort of that function portion, that, that temporary portion of the running of the global execution context. Whereas if we were to declare them without var, let, or const, they'll be placed onto the window object. And a sort of a similar thing is true whenever we run a function. So let's say again that we're gonna run a function. This function is going to be, let's, um, let's just make it say create variable and what this function does is it's going to create a variable so i'm going to say const my variable equals true so when we actually run this function create variable we're going to place we're going to push a stack frame onto the call stack for create variable and inside of the running of that function execution context, that, that sort of top level stack frame on the call stack, when we are running that code, the code inside of that function's scope, what's gonna happen to that variable that we create inside of there? Well, because we are creating it with const, it is going to be created within that function, that function portion of this function. But we know that if we were to write this variable without const, actually the first thing that it would do is it would look outside of the function to see whether there is already something called my variable 
inside of the global execution context. If it is, it will overwrite it. If it's not, then it will go one level up. It'll try to look on, again, the window. So regardless of how many function execution context deep you are, eventually still going to try to write that variable onto the global object, in this case, the window. It's always something we have to be careful of. So some ways that we can prevent ourselves from accidentally potentially writing variables onto the global object. Way number one, always use a variable declaration keyword. So var, let, or const. Way number two, use that process of global abatement where we created another global object, which would be accessible throughout the entirety of our app. And then way number three is to actually prevent ourselves from writing that functionality in the first place. We can do that using something called strict mode. So one of the things that strict mode will do is it will actually prevent us from writing a variable without using a variable declaration keyword. By the way, all this talk of the global object, if you ever want to see what is actually in the global object, there are a couple different ways that you can do that. Way number one, we can look at what this is. So the reserved keyword this in JavaScript will by default point to the global object. So that's one way we could type that in in our dev tools, take a look, pop this open. You can see all of the data, all of the functionality that exists for the global object for the browser. Another way we can call that runtimes global object by name. So either window or the node global object, which off the top of my head, not sure, but we can look at here in the browser, we can look at window. We can just say window directly. Another way, global this. Global this by default is going to point to this, which points to the global object. And then the fourth way is a little bit weird. If you're familiar with the concept of closure, this should look familiar to you. If we have a function, let's say I have a function, say name, and what this function will do is it will return Chris. Now we know from before that functions are both functions and objects. So what I want to do is actually see the object portion of this function object combo. And I'm going to do that using a special console method called console dir stands for directory. So that will allow us to see the object portion of a function object combo. So I'm going to pass in my function here. It was called say name, and that will allow me to see all of the object methods and functionality and data associated with say name. In this case, uh, it doesn't have anything except the default stuff, but we can see down here that there's going to be something called scopes. And again, if you're familiar with closure, you'll see your closures in the scopes tab here, but you'll also see something called global. And that is going to point sort of one level down to the global object. So those are sort of the four ways that we can look at the global object, at least in the browser. All right, I'm going to cap it there for today. If you have found this useful, helpful, informative, if you've found value in this, please feel free to give me a subscribe down below like this and leave me a comment if you have a question. I'll be sure to answer that as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.